point uh, in saying that our policies were followed. Uh, security was actually augmented as a result of, of, uh, of Meade's history. Um, uh, so they, they did, in fact, go above and beyond. The second piece of that, which falls squarely on me, is whether our policies and practices were sufficient enough to put our staff in a position to maintain their safety and security. And so that's the process that's ongoing right now uh, for department leadership as well as prisons leadership uh, to make sure that they're positioned as, as good as possible. But uh, I can tell you from our initial review of events, uh, uh, facility leadership in, in authorizing that transport and augmenting resources as well as the conduct and performance of our staff in the execution of that of that transport uh, were wholly in line with our policies and practices. So there was more protection than was required? Correct. Director, one more question for you. Any insight into how someone who's in a maximum security prison in the most restricted part of that prison could have possibly coordinated this kind of escape? Uh, absolutely, that, and that's what we've turned our investigative resources towards uh, ferreting out. Uh, what we do know, and, and this is, uh, I think, a, a challenge that plagues corrections across the country, is contraband cell phones, uh, other third parties, other means of communicating. You know, one of our, one of the things we we try very hard to interdict are the abilities for people in custody to further their criminal activities on the outside or within our secure institutions. So we know that that there are ways that they attempt to thwart uh, our our procedures and, and our safeguards that we have in place uh, and, and that's what we're trying to figure out right now is exactly how what we we know with near certainty this was not an accident this was a planned event uh, and we're channeling every resource we have into trying to understand exactly how they went about planning it Yeah, the information we have is that he was he was in restraints uh, while he was being escorted out of the out of the hospital once uh, events transpired. I'll, I'll defer to uh, the, the the people investigating those events. But but yeah, he was he was in restraints. Is there any details you can share about what happened from the time they left the hospital to when they were arrested? And also, in terms of the homicide, is there any um, array of nice ties, or how is it possibly linked to the There's not a lot that we know. Obviously, our, our folks are still on the scenes of those homicides. It, it has not been that long since we found this out, so we're still investigating. In the coming days, we will, we will be able to learn more information about whether those ties exist or, or what happened. Uh, I, you ask about handcuffs. We did find the shackles at the scene of one of the homicides, so that's uh, one of the ways that we tied them together. Were they still driving the same vehicle? Uh, we found the uh, vehicle they escaped in up in uh, northern Idaho, and uh, they uh, took another vehicle. Who who put that out? Uh, it is possible. Yes. It is possible. Uh, it is so recently that I can't give you a lot. I know uh, they were located. Uh, they determined that they were found, apparently, and they tried to flee. I don't know how long the pursuit lasted. Uh, it was in Twin Falls County, and uh, they were taken into custody without shots. Were they spotted by a member of the public or a police officer? How were they spotted? Uh, I don't know that information. Is one of these homicides... We weren't there. Uh, they did have his car. I don't know. Uh, the investigation is so early, we don't know exactly what transpired. Did it happen to be a Chrysler Pacifica? No? Uh, I do not know. Because that's what he was seen, uh, they say, in, in Missoula. So I don't know if there's anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And these are the tips that come in that helped us solve this. Yeah, yeah. It's like getting all these together. Which agency took them to custody? There are numerous agencies involved. Uh, to, to say one, uh, it's unclear, and it is so fresh, we, 
we know they're in custody. We don't have all the details of what, what transpired. Do you all believe that Umfenauer was in Florida up until Sunday? I have no idea. Uh, they are in custody. Uh, as far as I uh, know, we have not heard of any injuries sustained during the uh, takedown. Was there any gunfire exchange? No, there was not. Any indication if the two people who were killed uh, had any ties to any gangs? We're uh, working that out. Uh, don't have any information on that at this time. Obviously, as I said, the, the investigation is ongoing, and we'll sort that out in the coming days, but uh, it's too soon to, to speculate on that. Were one of those homicides in Orofino? Uh, I didn't, they were both in, uh, well, one, we don't know where it occurred, but uh, they were both located in rural Idaho, so not inside city limits. Where do you uh, again, I'm not going to get into the details of the homicide. One, I'm not there. Our guys are still on scene doing that job, and so I don't want to get it wrong. Where do you believe they may have been heading? Uh, to Twin Falls County. I'm not, I'm not trying to be smart. All we know is that's where they ended up, and that's where we caught them. Uh, again, the investigation's ongoing. Does it seem that they wanted to get to these two people that they killed specifically? The, the motive and why they they did what they did, um, I don't know. What role did, did the... Uh, I believe the director confirmed that, yes. Is that accurate? Correct. What role did the FBI play in all of this? They assisted us. And also in terms of the Aryan Knights, anything being done in the prison to address that gang, given that... You know, I will happily uh, turn this over to the director. <laughs> yeah, the, the Aryan Knights are, are one of multiple security threat groups that we monitor uh, and try to interrupt their activities. Um, you know, I, I think uh, that that's a, a daily occurrence within the Department of Correction is trying to trying to help uh, trying to mitigate the damage that gangs can do uh, primarily primarily when that criminal activity can extend beyond our secure perimeters and wind up back out in our communities. Um, but in terms, of, in terms of the actions of Skylar Mead and Nicholas Umfenauer, uh, you know, uh, their gang involvement doesn't necessarily indicate that this was a, uh, some sort of gang-sanctioned event. Uh, in fact, we have, uh, I, I think that's, you know, I'll leave it at that right now, but but independent of their actions, uh, the Department of Corrections and our team of investigators and staff work hard every day to try to disrupt any sort of organized criminal activity that, that happens within our facilities. Can you clarify, where are they being held and what's next for both of the men? Uh, they were arrested in Twin Falls County, so that they will start their uh, I'm sure they'll be taken to the Twin Falls County Jail to begin with. Uh, from there, uh, as the investigation proceeds and we develop more information, uh, there'll probably there's a good chance there'll be prosecution in several different locations. Whose car was the Honda Civic or Honda Accord that you all mentioned? Was it Umfenauer's or was it stolen? It was reported stolen. And I think uh, we're going to cut it off at that point. One more last question. With this case? Uh, by information that we developed on the scenes of the homicide, and I'm, I can't go much further than that. And the homicide took place today? Uh, in the last 24 hours. And that's truly all. Thank you, folks. No. All right, we just heard from Boise Police Chief Ron Weiniger. We heard from Idaho State Police as well as the Idaho Department of Correction. They said that those two suspects, Nicholas Umfenauer and IDOC inmate Skylar Mead, were found 
in Twin Falls County. This after early yesterday morning, uh, Umfenauer showed up allegedly at St. Alphonsus and shot officers as they were taking Skylar Mead out of St. Alphonsus. Uh, we are told that Skylar Mead was in restraints at this time. It was a ambush type attack yeah. and had to have been coordinated somehow. Idaho uh, Department of Correction along with U.S. Attorney's Office, FBI, everybody's investigating how exactly they planned this while Mead was inside uh, Idaho Maximum Security Institute. And we did get a little bit of indication on what possibly could have happened here. We did learn that Nicholas Umfenauer and Skylar Mead that they, they were together at some point during their incarceration at mm -hmm. IDOC. I want to show you this map here right now and something that was brought up. Idaho State Police says that there were two homicides that have happened here in the state of Idaho over the last 24 hours, we believe, that are possibly connected to both Mead and Umfenauer. We'll show you this map right now. We'll start with the top up at Leland, Clearwater, and Nez Perce County. You can see up in that area, there's a possibility of two homicides that were connected to both of these men. And Morgan, something that I thought was extremely uh, interesting was that the Idaho State Police, they're telling us that the prison shackles or the IDOC mm -hmm. shackles that were supposedly on Mr. Mead, they were found at one of the scenes of the homicide. So exactly. that's kind of how they start to connect two and two. But if you take a look at this map, and again, the men arrested in Twin Falls and believe they're being taken to the Twin Falls jail as we speak. All of this happening, by the way, about two mm -hmm. o'clock, so about an hour ago. Uh, you can see, though, they, they went all around the state of Idaho after uh, basically leaving Boise about two o'clock yesterday morning. Yeah, exactly. So that incident with IDOC officers happened in Boise. We're told that they made their way up north to both both Nez Perce and Clearwater counties, and that is allegedly where uh, law enforcement believes that two homicides that could be connected to these two individuals occurred. They say that they found the suspect's car that they got away from uh, St. Alphonsus with. They found that car in Leland, Idaho. You can see that on the map. And then again, as Joe said, they were found in Twin Falls today. It's important to note this happened after a short car chase, and both suspects were taken into custody without any shots fired. No extensive use of force was used in the situation, according to Boise's police chief, Ron Weiniger. Uh, and again, it happened within the last hour. Numerous tips came in from across the state and the region, and law enforcement is really grateful for the collaboration that they had with surrounding agencies after specifically that blue alert came out yesterday late morning. And something else I did want to touch on uh, while we have you here, we did get an update on those IDOC officers that mm -hmm. were injured. They were shot yesterday. We have learned that two officers do remain hospitalized. We're not exactly sure what their condition is, but the indication was they are doing better mm -hmm. and they do not have life-threatening injuries. Exactly. And we did learn that one IDOC officer was released. Again, we've reported that two officers were shot by who we now know as Nicholas Umfenauer. Another was incidentally shot by a BPD officer. We're not exactly sure who was released and what mm -hmm. conditions are out there, but um, I did want to add quickly that Nicholas Umfenauer, again, the man who came and picked up me from the hospital early yesterday morning, we just learned during that news conference, he was released from the, the state prison here yep. in January of this year. Yeah, exactly. And as Joe mentioned, uh, IDOC's director, Josh Tewalt, saying that he and Meade shared some overlap time in that maximum security prison, and they are both members of the white supremacist prison gang, Aryan Knights. Police are still investigating how exactly these two other homicides that occurred in North Idaho are connected to these two men. It is still a very active situation with detectives still on scene up in North Idaho. But again, those two IDOC officers that are still in the hospital are recovering. They are stable. One officer uh, was released from the hospital, and T. Walt said that their spirits certainly lifted when he told them that these suspects have been found, Joe. And we know over the next several days and probably weeks and months, we're going to learn more and more about the situation. If you were curious, though, other than the IDOC crossover between these two gentlemen, what connections do they have? Um, uh, we heard from state police that they do believe there are some shared connections within mm -hmm. social circles between these two men. Again, and in the prison. And in the prison, mm -hmm. yes. And, you know, that, that Aryan Knight prison gang, uh, as Director Tawalt was saying, they know it's a problem. It's something they monitor. The question is now is how did all this come together and how do they prevent it from happening again? Yeah, he elaborated as well about how difficult it is sometimes to trace and track communication from inside prison as well as outside prison. They have a system in prison that they use to message people outside called JPay, but certainly in something like this, uh, it's likely, you know, that wouldn't necessarily be used. It's possible that there was contraband cell phones. Uh, T. Walt said that that's really common inside Idaho Department of Correction, and they try so hard to intercept and mitigate any of that going on, but it's really difficult. And so their staff is investigating again how exactly they were able to coordinate this attack that they're calling planned. He said, quote, there are ways they attempt to thwart procedures and safeguards in place and 
so that's exactly what they're trying to figure out right now, Joe. Well, if you're just joining us here on News Channel 7, we are live here bringing you coverage after a uh, press conference. Again, we want to tell you that the two men, that law enforcement across the state of Idaho, the two men they are looking for after a shooting and a prison break, really, from uh, St. Alphonsus yesterday, both men have been arrested without incident in Twin Falls. However, Idaho State Police tell us that there's been two homicides really up in North Idaho mm -hmm. that are possibly connected to this, something that we'll definitely have to dig into over the next several days. Yeah, still so